Hi, everyone. Congratulations on making it to your webinar. Uh, before we get started, I want to start with just a few things about Zoom, which is the web uh, platform that we're using today. You're probably going to want to play around with Zoom a little bit. So first, you should know, as attendees, your video is off and you are muted. Uh, please use the Q&A function down there at the bottom of the screen to ask any questions. This is going to help us keep a record of the questions that you ask us. We have advising staff who are working over in the background behind the scenes to answer all of your questions. Just so you know, attendees might see the questions and answers, but if you want, you are welcome to ask your questions anonymously. Um, we're not going to be using the raise your hand function today, and we prefer not to use the chat function to answer questions. Please remember to use that Q&A. As presenters, we might use the chat function to send out websites or group messages to all of you. The focus of today's webinar is to help you get acclimated to the college and to your major. We'll also be sharing information on planning your first quarter and how to get ready for your advising appointments this summer. We plan to leave most of the time for Q&A at the end. And don't worry, we'll post the webinar online in the next day or so. Let's start by taking a moment to introduce ourselves. Presenters, can you all tell us your name, your position in department, uh, how you support new students, and uh, a fun fact about yourself. Hi, I'm Jemmy Okolo, one of the staff advisors for managerial economics. Um, as a staff advisor, I help students like you all navigate the complexities of the university. And a fun fact about myself, um, I cannot drink a beverage while eating my food. I have to wait until the end. Hi, my name is Chris Guevara. I'm also a major advisor with Managerial Economics. Um, so I'm here to help you with major requirements and also navigate the complexities of the university. Um, one fun fact about myself is that, actually I have two kids, one's two and one's turning six at the end of this month. Um, the older one lost his first tooth yesterday and uh, he, put it, he put the tooth under his pillow and the tooth fairy came by to our house um, and gave him some money for that tooth. Hi everyone, my name is Maria Sandanya. I am one, another uh, academic advisor for managerial economics. Uh, super excited and uh, to be here with you all and wanna welcome you um, to our major and to our campus. Uh, fun fact about me is that I'm also an alumni of UC Davis and I know a lot of little secret places that you can study. So if we meet, uh, ask me and I will be happy to share those for you. Hello, I am Elizabeth Clark, and Baba. I'm so excited for all of you uh, to have been accepted to UC Davis and um, into the managerial economics major. Um, I can't think of a fun fact about myself, but I love chocolate and I love dogs and that's all you need to know about that. But I'm really looking forward to working, working with you all and I um, really enjoy making study plans for students. So um, come in and see us and we'll get you um, started with your academic plans. And I'm Greg Anderson. I'm uh, an advisor in the Dean's office. So I'm here to help you out uh, with questions about general education requirements, college and university requirements, and then any other general questions that you have. Uh, a fun fact about me is that when I was in college, I was a DJ on our college radio station. Um, and UC Davis has a college radio station too. So that's a route that you can take if you're interested when you get to campus. I believe we also have three peers on the call, if you uh, would like to introduce yourselves quickly. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kevin. I am a peer advisor with the managerial economics major, and usually you'll be able to drop in uh, in our office for peer advising during the school year. Um, and I am also a recent alumni, and a fun fact about me, uh, I have six fish tanks at home.
Hi, everyone. My name is Ashton, and I am also a peer advisor with Manager Economics, and I am also a very recent uh, graduate of UC Davis. Uh, I would say a fun fact about me is that I can play two saxophones at once. Hi, everyone. My name is Ajari. Um, I'm going to be a fourth year in the fall. And a fun fact about myself is that during quarantine, I have learned how to make bread. Also, we have in our question and answer room, uh, Lily and Danielle, who are going to be answering all of your questions. They're gonna say hello in the chat. We're gonna go off camera for now so that you can focus on the content of the presentation. And we're gonna come back on camera for the live Q&A at the end. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. As a student in the College of Ag, you have a really wide network of support. This includes major advisors who can help you with major specific questions like, what classes should I be taking? How do I get involved in my major? And what research opportunities are available in my major? You also have the UAP Dean's Office. We can help you explore different majors, answer questions about your university, general education, and college requirements, and any other general questions that you might have. Although we all specialize in certain areas, major advisors and the UAP Dean's Office can connect you with campus resources and introduce you to co-curricular opportunities so that you can get involved in the major or in the college. You may also work with faculty advisors in your major. Uh, these are experienced professors that can help you tailor your major to your interests. You might also work with peer advisors who are current UC Davis students. We're all here to help you navigate your academic career. Please don't be afraid to ask for help as you begin your educational journey at UC Davis. Now we're going to move on to major specific information for managerial economics. So what is managerial economics? Managerial economics goes beyond the limits of traditional economics and business majors, blending a thorough grounding in economic theory with business knowledge and applications. The program provides in-depth exposure to economics and quantitative methods, problem-solving strategies, critical thinking, and effective communication skills. You'll be able to specialize in one or more emphases selected in the following. Business economics, international business economics, environmental and resource economics, and agribusiness. We'll briefly go over each of these emphases in an upcoming slide. Students who graduate in managerial economics will be skilled in critical thinking and decision making, supported by economic principles and best practices. You will develop strong quantitative skills that will allow you to have the ability to use data to inform economic and business decisions. You will also become effective communicators, confidently using appropriate terminology in oral and written form. Lastly, a managerial economic student. As a managerial economic student, you'll be able to work effectively in teams to address strategic and organizational challenges. Also, I wanna apologize, that's my son who got the visit from the Tooth Fairy um, yelling in the background. Um, so some possible careers for managerial economics. This major will prepare students for an ideal transition into promising careers in both public and private sectors of business and industry. Man Econ graduates will establish careers in, very, in every area of business, including marketing, analysis, consulting, financial services, accounting, entrepreneurship, real estate, and government. Many managerial economics graduates have entered advanced degree programs in business management, accounting, and law. So this slide here um, is a copy of our degree worksheet. And the degree worksheet shows us the requirements for the managerial economics major. It looks like a lot, but there are just four components. In this top left corner here, this is our major English requirement. It's composed of a communication class and an upper division writing course. The middle left section here is our preparatory requirements. And this is composed of introductory courses to micro and macroeconomics, calculus, stats, accounting, business law, and computer science. 
in the bottom left section here is our core courses. And that's composed of two intermediate microeconomics courses, an intermediate macroeconomics course, econometrics, and one operations research and management science course. Everyone in the major has to complete this column of the requirements, regardless of which emphasis they choose. And this big portion here, these are our restricted electives. Um, this is where you'll find the major's four different emphases. Like I said in the previous slide, an emphasis allows students to select restricted elective requirements that focus on a specific area of study within Man Econ. Each emphasis requires at least 32 units or eight classes of restricted electives. A number of students get confused and they think that they have to complete this whole thing. Um, but you definitely don't have to do that. You just have to complete 32 units in at least uh, one of these columns here. And the four different emphases are uh, business economics here. In this emphasis, um, it's kind of like the catch all emphasis that's designed for students who's interested in anything business related. It provides students with a general understanding of the modern business world, where you'll be able to take courses focused on subjects like corporate finance, business strategy, marketing, investment, wealth management, accounting, and commodity markets. This column here is international business economics. This emphasis is for students interested in ex uh, the exploration of economic factors and public policies affecting patterns of growth in international trade, import export markets, globalization, and emerging market economies. Uh, this emphasis here is environmental and resource economics. It's an emphasis for students interested in learning about the vital relationships between the environment and natural resources and the economy. You'll be able to take courses that involve subjects like climate change, cap and trade, pollution policies, wind and solar energy, and groundwater management. And the last emphasis is agribusiness economics. This emphasis is for students interested in food and fiber production, agricultural trade and resources, food consumption, uh, animal welfare, GML regulations, farm management and farm labor. You don't have to worry too much about the details of this right now. We'll go over the details along with your current academic record when we meet for your one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, we'll also send out a link to a resource, resource page for newly admitted students um, where you'll find uh, the degree requirements. So as Chris mentioned, we will go over your individual schedules during, uh, later on during your appointment. The purpose of this slide is to give you a general idea of what your first quarter will look like. For first years, we recommend a calculus course. The Math 16 series is the, is the preferred calculus series for managerial economics, but you are also allowed to do the Math 17 and 21 series. Staff advisors can discuss the best calculus series for you during your Aggie advising appointment. We also recommend a general education course an English course that helps you satisfy your entry level writing requirement or part of your college composition requirement and a first year seminar or career discovery group. For transfers, if you have completed the lower division preparatory requirements, we recommend the core class ARE 100A and upper division ARE restricted elective from an emphasis of your choosing, a class for your minor and a first year seminar or career discovery group. If you do not plan to pursue a minor, you can take a non-major elective for units toward graduation. So what happens now? Starting June 15th, staff advisors will meet with you to go over your first quarter schedules and any work you are transferring to UC Davis. Many of you have already made appointments with a staff advisor. For those of you who have not, 
please schedule one using appointments.ucdavis.edu. We will conduct Aggie advising appointments through July 31st. We ask that you finish Aggie 101 before your advising appointment. Finishing Aggie 101 will give you the context needed in order to fully understand your major requirements and how they fit into your overall degree. If you have additional questions about managerial economics, I recommend exploring our website. It has the major requirements, sample plans, videos from faculty and peer advisors, and plenty of other resources that will prove useful to you during your time at UC Davis. After Aggie advising and summer registration, please continue to seek advising. We have a full team of staff advisors, peer advisors, and a faculty and slash master advisor ready to help you navigate the complexities of the major and the university. We also have a student services advising assistant who can help, general, help with general questions and scheduling advising appointments. When we eventually return to campus, come visit us in 1176 Social Science and Humanities, also known as the Death Star. Students should consider joining a club. That way they are able to apply the material learned in class into club business projects. Clubs have also helped students with finding a community on campus. They allow you to meet more students within the major and some outside the major too. This makes UC Davis seem not so big anymore. So I was a part of the Economics Business Student Association here in Davis, also known as EBSA. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, during my time at Davis, EBSA was a really great resource for me to get more involved and meet other students, especially outside of the major. Clubs like EBSA helped me develop my professional skills and social network, which was really useful to me, finding internships on the job hunt and just general career direction. Each quarter, they take a different business related topic, such as marketing, finance or entrepreneurship to build a case competition with you and a few other group members. It's really easy to join and they recruit every quarter each year, like I had joined during my freshman year. I hope you all get a chance to look more into the different clubs at Davis because they can really make your college experience. UC Davis study abroad is also another great way to enrich your learning. Uh, I personally study abroad and it was a great way for me to meet other students of the same major or similar majors and also students from other universities. It's also a great way to apply your learning through a global perspective. So now that you've learned all about advising and how to get connected with your advisors, we want to encourage you to get involved with the College of Ag. There are so many different ways that you can do this during your time at UC Davis and not just during your first quarter. The UAP Dean's Office offers a number of fun opportunities for new students to engage with our staff and with your peers. For example, our Aggie Ambassadors Program gives students the chance to participate in community service and outreach while promoting our college. In the top left photo, our Aggie Ambassadors are participating in outreach to high school students at the Future Farmers of America event. In the Career Discovery Group Program, New College of Ag students can get a head start in exploring different career paths with the guidance of a campus mentor that's a graduate student at UC Davis. Another great opportunity in the college is our Manners Organization, also known as the Multiculturalism in Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Related Sciences Organization, where students can take part in promoting diversity in the field of agriculture. All of these programs offer unique ways for new students to get involved with the college, and in some cases, even earn academic units. Contact the UAP Dean's Office to join these programs for more information. Also, be on the lookout for our events this fall, like Coffee with the Dean, Ice Cream Socials, Study Breaks, and my personal favorite, Slice of Advising, where you come get free advising, and almost more importantly, free pizza. With that, we're going to move on to the Q&A. If you can't stay for this portion, that's okay. 
You can find all of our contact information on this slide. If you want, you can take a photo or a screenshot of it that we've got it all in one place. And feel free to reach out to both the Dean's office as well as your managerial economics advising team with any questions this summer. So we have a number of questions that have come in. There's a really good one here uh, that says managerial economics is a major that not many colleges have. What are some advantages that you think that it has compared to a regular economics major? Um, I can answer that one. So the one of the major differences between uh, managerial economics and um, regular economics is that uh, managerial economics is more focused on um, applied economics um, or quantitative analysis. Uh, regular economics is a little bit more focused on economic theory um, and maybe even uh, a policy. Um, I think um, folks would also say that man econ is uh, more focused on microeconomics while um, economics is more focused on, on macroeconomics. Um, we're closer to a business degree than economics is. So if you're interested in a career in business, um, the managerial economics is uh, the, the major that you want to choose. We have another question here that says, what are the writing requirements that Davis requires and the major advisors? So I'll start off with the Davis piece and then maybe Jemmy can answer the major piece. Um, and so I'm going to answer this with uh, it's sort of in the uh, answer form of a sandwich where I'm going to give two keys, two pieces of bread, but with all the content in the middle. So first off is every stu individual student's situation is different. So I'd recommend that this summer or this fall that you come in, meet with a dean's office advisor or one of our peer advisors, and we can take a look at what you have completed and let you know what's done and what you still need to complete. Um, so the actual requirements, there are three that are often confused because they're all sort of writing requirements, um, but slightly different categories. There's ELWR, which is the entry level writing requirement. That is something that most students will fulfill either at the end of high school or within their first year at Davis. And that's for all UC students at Davis, at UC Irvine, at any UC campus. Um, after that, there is a requirement called the college composition requirement in the College of Ag um, that is fulfilled by two classes and we can give you those two classes. Well, there's a long list. There's, a, I think, a list of about 15 classes you can take. You just have to take two of them to fulfill this requirement. Uh, and then lastly, there's a writing experience general education requirement. Um, and there are uh, dozens upon dozens of classes that you can take to fulfill that. Um, and you need a grand total of uh, nine units for that requirement. So that was the meat, that was the content. And I wanna finish with that other piece of bread saying, come into the Dean's office, meet with our advisors, and we'll let you know exactly what you individually need to fulfill. So for managerial economics, um, it's a tad bit more simple than that. Um, we just require two classes, a communication class and an upper division writing class. For the communication class, all students have two options. They can either use uh, an interpersonal communication class um, at Davis, it's known as CMN3, um, or they can use a public speaking class, intro to public speaking. At Davis, that is also known as CMN1. Transfer students might have already completed the communication part of the requirement at their previous in institution. For the second part of the requirement, the upper division writing class, all managerial economics majors have to take UWP 104A or business writing. It's an upper division class, so if you did not go to a four year institution previously, um, you would not have had a chance to take it. It's something that you can take here. 
And um, these classes, depending on their attributes, they can also count for a general education as well as the college writing requirement. But again, that's a specific detail that we can go over during your individual appointments. There is a question uh, that I think a lot of students have. It says, once I'm done with Aggie 101, I can make an appointment with an advisor, right? Chris, do you want to help out with that one? Um, yes. <laughs> you can definitely, um, once we're done with this, you can make appointments um, for major advisors. Um, we begin meeting with you all starting on Monday. Um, and we are going to be meeting with everyone until July 31st. Oh, and um, to make the appointment, the, oh, I guess we don't have the link up, but it's, um, it's, it's appointments.ucdavis.edu. I have another question about general education requirements. The question says, how do I check which G general education I still need to complete? Um, and is what is transferable to Davis's GE if I'm transferring from another university and have not finished the IGETC? Now, this, this sounds like this is maybe coming from a transfer student, but we also often have um, students coming from high school who have taken either AP exams, IB exams, or community college classes in high school. So this is true for them too. Uh, we will be happy to meet with you over the summer and let you know what requirements you have already fulfilled. We'll show you how to use the OASIS system to see uh, what is already done on your, your record. Um, and then specifically for transfer students who haven't finished your IGETSEs, um, we are happy to walk you through what is missing and what different options are available for you to finish your IGETSE and cover those GE requirements. Um, but there will definitely be opportunities for you to do that. One other thing that's really nice is that if you take classes towards your major, you can also apply those same classes towards your general education requirements. Let's see, we have a question here. Can we discuss the focus in environmental and resource economics and what we can do with it after? Uh, Jemmy, could you help out with that one? Yes. So um, environmental and resource economics. Uh, one second. Yeah, so that's... Um, that's an emphasis for students who are interested in learning, well, essentially more about the environment and how economic policy impacts uh, environmental policy. So for students um, looking to complete that emphasis, job prospects, usually we have a lot of students who have gone on to work with the government, uh, a part of their different ag agencies. Um, also, yeah, it's a lot of um, government regulation. As far as I've seen, it's a lot of students go into government regulation um, whenever they pursue that emphasis. Um, it's also a good emphasis to pair with maybe a minor in environmental policy um, and management. Um, I had a question about the process for advising. If uh, you need to communicate with advisors through face-to-face -face video, um, the answer is no. If you don't feel comfortable being on video, you do not need to be on video. Um, we do offer phone appointments or We've also done advising appointments using the same Zoom program um, where your camera is turned off the whole time. And that's helpful because then the advisor can uh, use the, the screen sharing function and show you the websites that they're viewing um, to, you know, as if you were in the office with us without you actually being on camera. Chris, we have another question about, it sounds like another program called the, the Entrepreneurship Program. Um, 
although this might also relate to the EBSA uh, club. Yeah, so um, with managerial economics, we, we don't have any entrepreneurship courses or um, there's not an entrepreneurship focus, um, but we do have other resources like um, the EB, EBSA club. Um, and then there's also a center called the Startup Center um, that allows students to explore their entrepreneurship um, goals. Um, the it's it's a program specifically catered well it's actually it's open to everybody so you don't have to be um, in man econ um, it's actually housed under the engineering department um, there are courses that you could take on how to begin thinking about startups how to look for funding um, if that's something that you're interested in um, when we meet for our one-on-ones, let us know, and then we could give you the information. Well, we could um, talk about adding that class to your schedule as an elective, um, and then give you more information about um, the, the Student Startup Center. Um, and I don't know if any of the peers wanna jump in and maybe talk about how EBSA um, will help students explore entrepreneurship. Yeah. I can talk a little about that. So um, there are a bunch of campuses, um, different clubs on campus that actually go through sort of an entrepreneurship um, sort of practice. What they'll do for the most of the time and from my experience with EBSA, they will put you in a group together at the beginning of the quarter. And then you would work together specifically, let's say for entrepreneurship, you would work together in creating and designing a product. And you would go through the full process, um, doing market research, development, and at the end, you would be a case competition where you would pitch your idea to investors to see if that would actually go through. And then there's many stages to it, um, but that's just for EBSA. I know many other clubs on campus, they do something similar. Will they explore entrepreneurship as well, um, whether that be just by yourself or through a more group activity based. I have a question here that says, I've taken a brief look at Oasis. Uh, why does it seem like I haven't taken any classes at all? Is this because my transcript hasn't been fully evaluated? And that's absolutely correct. Um, right now we are welcoming thousands upon thousands of new students to UC Davis, both within managerial economics, the College of Ag, but then also within our other three colleges at Davis, the College of Letters and Science, Engineering, and then Biological Sciences. Um, and the admissions office is still adding all of your transcripts to your academic record, whether you're coming from a high school or a community college or another four-year university. So that process is going to keep happening throughout the summer. Those should mostly be uh, added to your record to help inform which classes you want to register for in August. Um, but also in your one-on-one -on -one advising appointments, your advisors can take a look at the classes you've taken already to give you uh, more personalized advice around the classes that would be a good fit for you. Major advisors, do you have any other additions to that? I think you covered it. There is a question here that um, what kinds of classes would go under your general education requirements? Um, and also what does the first year seminar or career discovery group course consist of? So I'll talk about general education requirements first in a very broad level. Those cover a really wide range of topics that uh, are really good for students to develop an understanding of in college. So there are areas such as scientific literacy and quantitative literacy. So students become familiar with uh, scientific processes and systems, um, as well as uh, with math and with their quantitative uses. Um, there's visual literacy where students might be studying things like art or uh, drama. There is the domestic diversity requirement that focuses on uh, America's, American diversity and history. Um, there's also the world cultures requirement, which looks at the world more broadly outside of America. So there's a really wide range. Rest assured, there are hundreds upon hundreds of classes at UC Davis that you can take to satisfy these requirements. So you're gonna have a lot of options to take your interests 
and meet your graduation requirements. Um, the first year seminar and career discovery group, again, pairs you with a small group of students, usually 20 students are going to be in your class and there'll be a graduate student, either a master's student or a PhD student teaching your class. They're gonna help connect you with different resources on campus and then also help you do research about different career fields to give you a better idea of what kinds of fields you might want to or not want to go into uh, and then give you practical steps on how you can spend the rest of your time at Davis, whether you're a transfer student or first year, uh, to start preparing for those careers. There's a question here about uh, what types of internships are available, uh, particularly within the, the man econ field um, to expand on students' experiences. Oh, so we get, we get a ton of internship opportunities. Um, and there, there are a couple of resources for that. Um, when, you're, when you uh, start taking classes, you'll actually be added to our listserv. Um, and whenever we get uh, an internship opportunity or a career opportunity, you meet, we email that out um, to all of you. So be sure to check your email on a regular basis because we'll be sending some out there. Um, the other resource um, that we have uh, for all students, all UC Davis students is the Internship and Career Center. Um, they also have a listserv um, that will allow you to um, receive emails that have careers specifically in um, business and uh, business management. Um, they also have advisors that you can meet with one-on-one -on -one, um, for anything that, for, for basically any kind of questions you have about um, an internship or a career. So learning how to search for jobs or how to um, sharpen your resume or your, your interview skills. Um, they're a great resource for that as well. And every quarter, they also have a, a job fair um, where you can meet, they invite a number of employers to campus um, and you'll be able to meet some of those employers at the job fair. Um, bring your resume, get dressed up, bring your cover letter, um, you know, be with them and, and present yourself basically. So we have a couple of questions here uh, that I know a lot of people have. We even have them and that's the question of will fall quarter be online? Um, and so this is something that is still being worked out because with coronavirus and shelter in place orders, um, things are changing on a weekly basis and campus uh, is trying to ensure that we're able to provide the safest opportunities for learning for all of our students, staff, and faculty. What the Chancellor has shared most recently is that they are targeting having a fall quarter and remember that fall quarter at Davis starts at the end of September, which is much later than some semester campuses that start in mid-August. Um, but having a fall quarter with some classes that are available in person with enhanced safety guidelines. That being said, if students are not comfortable with uh, coming to campus and being in person, if they have health concerns or any other reason, uh, that the fall quarter classes will be available remotely if students would like to pursue that option. Um, so we're still waiting for more details of exactly how that'll play out, which classes, um, Will, will be available and when that will happen. Um, but we're currently looking at sort of a hybrid model where you can take classes in person if you're interested, but you can also take classes remotely uh, if that's a better fit for you. And then one other question uh, relating to if things are online or if students are coming or doing their work from home, how would students participate in research as it relates to Man Econ? So we actually don't have a research component uh, for managerial economics. So our professors do research, but it's not a part of the major. So if you were interested in that, um, you can contact our 
the professor uh, with whoever you're working with and it would be something worked out between you and the professor. We have another question here that says, uh, how many extra courses are needed to get the CPA license? That's a license to be an accountant. Uh, is that obtained at the same time as a bachelor's or after the completion of my bachelor's? So that would be the actual exam that you would take um, for the for CPA um, happens after you receive your bachelor's. Um, but there are a number of courses um, that are required for both um, the managerial economics major and the accounting minor that will give you um, requirements to be able to sit in and take the CPA exam. Um, when you meet with us and we do our one-on-one -on -one appointments, let us know if you're interested in that. Um, and we have, um, we have a sheet that we can give you that shows all of the classes um, that are, that's offered in both the major and in the accounting minor um, that will allow you to fulfill those CPA requirements. I do also want to add that the sheet is unofficial. That is our best estimation of what um, classes at Davis count toward the CPA exam requirements. Um, the, if you want to know what the requirements are, you should always, always, always refer to the California Board of Accountancy. We also have uh, the Davis Accounting Society, um, and they are our go-to resource for um, uh, questions about the CPA exam. So you can also utilize them in that way as well. We have a couple of questions about submitting transcripts, either from high schools or community colleges. We know that your high schools and community colleges also probably are not working in person, so they may be having um, issues with being able to print or send transcripts. So uh, the admissions office has actually at UC Davis has recently begun accepting digital copies of both transcripts and test scores. Um, this, this is, there are very specific procedures to submit these. So I've just added in the chat function a link to the page about submitting your transcripts and test scores uh, to our admissions office to add to your academic record. There is one other question about, do transfer students have to send in their high school transcripts? Um, in general, most transfer students will just send in their community college transcripts, um, but there may sometimes be requirements that you met in high school, uh, but using your community college transcripts will usually cover all of the requirements that we're looking at for UC Davis. I'm sorry, that was sort of a, 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 <laughs> a lengthy or a, muddled answer, but the, the quick answer is generally no. Generally we get community college transcripts and those include requirements from high school that we may need. Here's a really good question about studying abroad for Man Econ. I know a couple of students mentioned studying abroad. What study abroad opportunities are available specifically in the Man Econ major? Uh, Kevin or Ashton, do you want to talk about AOE 112? Yeah, so I can talk about um, AOE 112. So last summer, uh, Kevin and I, we participated in AOE 112, which is organizational management. And it was uh, in Edinburgh in the United Kingdom. The course title was Global Perspectives in Management. And we spent about four or five weeks in Edinburgh and just kind of learned about the European perspective about business, as well as how the supply chains work um, between Europe itself. It was a really great experience and I highly recommend it to anybody ever interested in studying abroad. Uh, we got to visit not only Edinburgh, we got to visit London and Glasgow, uh, while also meeting more one-on-one -on -one with different business leaders in the UK as well. Uh, Kevin, do you have anything to add? 
Yeah, I definitely agree with Ashton. It was a really good experience. Um, if you want to go out there and also just look at different other colleges um, and um, different other opportunities that you may be potentially interested, um, it is a great uh, thing you can also do. And also, um, besides this specific program, I believe there's a, another class um, abroad for Stats 103. Um, I haven't personally taken it, but it's also through the UC Davis Study Abroad Office. Um, and then besides that, there are also internship abroad opportunities where you can do an internship related to the business field. Um, that's something you can also look into and also other numerous pro programs through the UCAP office. Um, and that's something you can learn more about uh, by going on their website. There's a good question here as students start planning ahead for enrolling. Uh, where is the best place to view full class descriptions to help select the elective classes for this major? Jimmy, do you, could you help out with that one? Yes, so you can go to our website, themanecon.ucdavis.edu. We have a section where we list all of the ARE classes that uh, you can pick from for the restricted electives. It also lists uh, course descriptions for our upper division core classes. Oh, and <clears throat> also the general catalog, uh, UC Davis general catalog, all of our requirements are in there as well. Um, I see a question here uh, specifically about the tech management minor as well as accounting. Um, for the tech management minor, Kevin, I know you completed that. Do you want to talk about how um, it supplemented the man econ major? Yeah, so the tech management minor is under the uh, grad school of management. Um, so that's like the the professional graduate school at UC Davis for business accounting. Um, and essentially the tech management minor is sort of like a, I guess a watered down version of like a MBA program. So it has a wide variety of different various business topics and courses that you can take. And I think it really complements um, the manager economic major because uh, you're also gaining further um, business classes that you can take to add on to your degree learning. Um, so for example, some of the classes that I took um, were business ventures. So we learned about um, venture capital. I learned, um, and then there was also accounting. Um, and then there's also various management courses um, and supply chain courses. So there's a big variety that you can choose from. Um, and I believe to complete the minor, you do have to complete five out of the six courses. Thank you. Um, and then for the accounting minor, as Chris mentioned earlier, if you were planning to take the CPA exam, the accounting minor will help satisfy some of the requirements um, that you have to complete in order to be eligible. There's a question here that says, will extra tuition be charged if I choose a minor? And the answer there is no. The tuition that you're charged uh, is the same for the year, um, whether you're taking 12 units a quarter or if you're taking 20 units a quarter. Uh, so if you choose a minor, which means that you're gonna be taking additional classes to fulfill that minor, uh, you will still be paying the same amount of tuition. The one exception is if you choose to enroll in extra classes like during summer session, that could be additional costs that you wouldn't otherwise take, uh, but that's not always an expectation to fulfill a minor. Jamie, it looks like there's a question that says requiring phone numbers while registering yes. for an advising appointment, but it only supports American phone numbers. Right, so uh, that is correct. Our system only supports American phone numbers. So if you don't have one, you can just put zero, 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 zero. Um, we require phone numbers um, because it's just another way for us to contact you. However, um, if you aren't able to input an American phone number and you have to input zero, all zeros or all ones, um, we'll just contact you via email. So be sure to check that.
related to the earlier question about minors is will choosing a minor prolong my graduation date? And the answer is maybe. And that depends on what classes you already need to fulfill and what minor you choose to pursue uh, and how you fit it into your schedule. So many students, if they start planning ahead when they first get to campus or even partway through their time at Davis, are able to create academic plans with their advisors, uh, determine which classes are required both for their major as well as their minor and get them to fit so that they're still able to graduate on time. But that's why it's important to meet both with your major advisors, the dean's office advisors, as well as any minors that you hope to pursue to see what options are available to you and how to make them fit as best as possible. There's one other question that says, anytime that I try to book an appointment, uh, it doesn't let me. Is access restricted? Chris, I know you talked about booking appointments a little bit earlier. Could you touch on that just a little bit more? Um, if you're receiving an error, um, what you could do is just email us um, and then we'll just, we'll, we'll book it for you. Um, there might be a number of reasons why you're not able to, to um, make the appointment but all newly admitted students should be able to make an appointment now. Um, Chris, yeah. can I jump in? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So you have to make sure that you're in the staff advisor's appointment calendar. Right now, there's a couple of different appointment calendars uh, for the different populations that we are serving. New students should be making an appointment with a staff advisor, not a peer or a staff advisor for continuing students. It should be on the staff advisor's calendar. So that might what's happening because right now it's all other calendars are restricted um, and first uh, new students can't make appointments on those other two we've had a couple of other questions about submitting transcripts and test scores um, as I mentioned before undergraduate admissions is currently processing those those documents. Um, they have said that they hope to have those documents processed by the end of July. Now, uh, first year students will be registering for their classes in, in early August and transfer students will be registering for all of their classes in mid August. So that will still have all of your current coursework added to your academic record in time to sign up for your classes for fall. Um, and then other questions is, should I wait until my IGETSI is received to book an appointment? No, you should uh, be able to talk to an advisor beforehand this summer, both your major advisors as well as in the dean's office. Um, if there are documents that you know are on their way, like an IGETSI or someone else asked about AP exams, just make sure to mention that to your advisors so they can consider that information if it has not been added to your academic record yet. And they can factor that into your academic plan. Um, we have some more other questions coming in, but it is 3.59. Uh, we're getting near the end of our time. If you do have additional questions, please reach out to us. You have our emails there, our websites, Facebook, Instagram. Feel free to let us know and make an appointment. We're happy to help you out. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.